Details, so many details. How do I do that in watercolor? Welcome back everyone to another video. I have finally summoned up the courage to tackle this very detailed painting that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And in today's video, I'll tell you a little bit about how I did it. A few years ago, we were visiting Charleston, South Carolina. Now, while we were waiting in the big red barn at Palmetto Carriage Works, it's the oldest horse-drawn carriage tour in the city, I snapped this photo of my precious little family. I was fascinated by the play of lights, vertical and horizontal lines of the horse stalls, the old signs, the rustic colors, all offset by the brilliant red benches, and I just knew I had to paint this image someday. Now, because the camera tends to warp things, you can see in the original photo, the the lines of the ceiling are all tilted and everything is kind of skewed. I did need to do some retouching to help straighten the lines. I also knew I'd want to leave out this red bucket and the person checking in the horses in the background. Now considering the level of detail in this image, I opted to use transfer paper to trace the image onto my watercolor paper rather than attempting to freehand sketch it. I could have drawn it quite accurately using a grid method, but I already knew the painting was going to take a long time, so I decided to spare myself the time and the headache. Now before jumping into any painting, it's a good idea to study your image and make some decisions about how you plan to approach it. With watercolor, you have to plan ahead for your whites, so that was the first thing I was thinking about. There are lots of tiny lights in the image, strings of white Christmas lights and Chinese lanterns, and some cords and threads overlapping the dark wood beams. I decided to use masking fluid to protect the white of the paper wherever possible. I applied this to the larger bright white areas of window light in the stalls, the light bulbs, and even the top of my little boy's blonde head. For some of the tinier white details, like the cords and the strings, I thought it would be better to use an opaque white paint for those. My overall approach to the painting was rather linear. I started at the top and worked my way down, doing one small section at a time. I used a limited palette, mainly ultramarine, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre, for the wood beams, the rafters, and the lights. During the whole process, I was listening to audiobooks and just immersed myself in the process. It was so relaxing and fun and not at all stressful. For each section, I worked mostly wet and dry, using multiple layers to adjust the color and the value through glazes. Now, for example, this wall of stalls began as a flat wash of burnt sienna mixed with ultramarine. After that dried, I added a second wash, darker this time. My third and fourth layers were usually final layers with dark details, like the shadowed lines between boards. As each layer dried, I would just hop around and work elsewhere in the painting. There's always something to work on. The areas between the dark wood stalls were painted mostly with thin washes of ultramarine and burnt sienna, helping it look like light streaming through windows and I occasionally use yellow ochre whenever I needed a more yellowish tone. I made the horses a little more prominent in my painting by making them darker than the stalls. I tried to do this without causing them to look distracting. I just wanted a subtle adjustment of values and slightly stronger lines around their edges to really help them look unmistakable. As I worked, I was studying every square inch of my reference photo, and it was really fun to discover little things I had not noticed before, like the horseshoe on the stall, the golden glow that surrounded each light bulb, the little hay bales stacked to the side, these short sets of stairs, and electric fans mounted up above to help cool down guests and horses. By the time I reached the portraits at the bottom of the composition, it kind of felt like a relief to be painting something a little more familiar, like skin and hair. For the skin tones, I used Windsor Newton Transparent Orange, Quinacridone Rose, Gamboge Nova, and a little bit of Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine. Now, my husband's dark blue shirt is the compositional focal point. It's really standing out as the strongest and simplest shape. I started by painting it wet and wet with indigo, but after it dried, I noticed some strange pooling of the paint that made it look like his shoulder blade was in the wrong place. So to remedy this, I simply re-wet the whole shirt with clean water, and then I essentially reactivated that paint color and blotted in some more paint where it needed it, softening and smoothing with a gentle motion of the brush just to help the shape look more perfectly blended. For the red benches, I used tape to mask off the white wood accents and to ensure straight lines. I also did this with the strong horizontal lines created by the railing. Tape can be your best friend when you're working with lots of straight lines. Just make sure it's securely bonded so that the paint doesn't bleed underneath. For my daughter's dress, I did multiple layers of quinacridone purple with hints of quinacridone rose and ultramarine. A lot of this was wet and wet, and then once that dried, I added subtle details over the top. 
Once everything was fully painted, I did some final touches with my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White for those subtle and tiny white details. If you have the time, the patience, and a good audiobook, projects like this are so much fun. This one really challenged me and forced me to utilize every scrap of knowledge I have about watercolor. The only way to grow and improve as an artist is to tackle projects that scare you just a little, right? Leave me a like and a comment below if you found this video helpful and insightful. Download my free watercolor jumpstart ebook guide below if you'd like to learn more about how to get started with watercolor basics. There's a link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other video about painting skin tones in watercolor and I'll see you over there.